Hey guys, it's Steve. So welcome back to another Grill Dome recipe video. So it is officially 2015. Hope you guys had some great holidays hanging out with family and friends. And to ring in the new year, I'm gonna show you how quick and easy it is to bake a meatloaf on the Grill Dome. And we're gonna make some tasty meatloaf sandwiches. So let's go ahead and get started. All right guys, let me go ahead and walk you through our setup on our dome here. This is gonna be an indirect cook. We're gonna be uh, preheating the dome to 350 degrees to bake this meatloaf. First thing you're gonna do is just set in the grill dome indirect cooking rack. Then you're just gonna take one of the grill dome ceramic stones and place that on top. That's providing your indirect setup right there. And then we're just gonna place the main cooking rack right on top. So that's all you have to do for this cook, nice and simple. We're gonna go ahead and shut the lid and get the dome uh, preheated 350. Okay guys, so what I wanted to show you with this meatloaf recipe is that um, the great thing about meatloaf is that you basically can just look around in your refrigerator and your pantry and just grab a whole bunch of random things, throw them together and put together an awesome meatloaf. Other than the meat, everything over here I already had in my pantry. Uh, I've got some of these uh, fire roasted uh, tomatoes, some carrots, then we've got uh, some salt and pepper, some fresh thyme that I chopped up, some fresh garlic. I'm gonna be using uh, some instant uh, Quaker oats here. Uh, my wife has a gluten intolerance, so uh, these work really well for us uh, with our meatloafs. You can obviously use bread or breadcrumbs, things like that. Um, and then we just have some Worcestershire, some eggs, some Dijon mustard. Uh, most recipes call for regular. This is actually a honey Dijon. That's all I had in the fridge. And then also most recipes you'll find will call for like a whole milk or maybe yogurt, but all I had in the fridge was skim milk. So we're gonna be using that. But again, it's gonna be just fine. And then all I had to buy over here was um, you can use just beef, you can um, experiment with different types of meats. One thing I found that works really well is using, this is a pound of beef, and then half a pound of uh, pork, and then half a pound of veal. And so we're gonna go ahead and start getting all this put together. What I like to do is start off by getting everything except the uh, oats and the meat. Um, put together and nice and blended up in the bowl. Okay, so I have all those ingredients added to the bowl. We're just gonna go ahead and mix all that up real quick, just like this. You can see that doesn't take much. That's all you're looking for. Now we're gonna go ahead and add our meat. and our oats. And this is where it gets fun. Meatloaf is a hands-on recipe. So you wanna get down in here and just use your hands and start incorporating everything together. And the trick is in order to get the um, desired consistency, you can add more of your oats or more of your bread or bread crumbs, whatever it is that you're using. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this all mixed up and we'll be back in a second. Okay, so we've got our meatloaf all mixed up. Now I'm gonna whip up the glaze real quick. Again, these are ingredients that I um, just had in the pantry and fridge. Uh, this is a very typical glaze for meatloafs. It's just three ingredients and uh, it's ketchup, brown sugar, and then apple cider vinegar. And we're just gonna get that mixed up real quick. All right, and that's about all we're looking for. Um, one thing some people do is uh, they also add like some sriracha or some hot sauce to just kind of give this a little bit of a, a little bit of a kick. Uh, what we're gonna do is use half of this to go ahead and glaze the meatloaf, and then we're gonna save the other half and use as a, a serving sauce. Okay, so what I've got here is a broiler pan. I've uh, lined with uh, aluminum foil on the bottom just to catch all the nastiness that's gonna be dripping off of this. And really the two main reasons why I like to use a broiler pan is that um, the fat is gonna be dripping down as it cooks. 
instead of a, uh, a meatloaf pan where you know the pan comes up on all four sides and it's kind of just sitting there simmering in the in the fat juices so I like that stuff to kind of just drain off but then also when we take our glaze here again we're just going to use about half of this to start off with that's good right there it allows you to get glaze uh, on the sides down here as well instead of just the top so all these sides get this gorgeous glaze this is going to get nice and caramelized as it bakes uh, on the grill down and get nice and crispy as well so that's all you got to do right there and we're going to go ahead and get this guy on the dome all right so the dome is nice and stabilized at 350 and you can see on this uh, extra large uh, grill dome model uh, this large broiler pan with this gigantic meatloaf uh, has plenty of room with room to spare and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of my wireless food probes and just get this guy put right in the middle so I can watch this thing from inside and we're going to be cooking this thing to an internal temp of around 160 to 165 so we'll pick back up when it's all done all right guys it has been right at one hour on the total cook time and my wireless uh a thermometer is reading out right at 165 and so this thing is ready so we're gonna go ahead and pull this and we'll pick back up in the kitchen okay guys so what I've done is um, I slice a nice chunk of the meatloaf uh, off the large uh, loaf and cut it in half here we've got some this is some fresh sourdough that was just uh, baked in my local bakery today and I just lightly toasted it and so all we're gonna do is we're just gonna take some nice fresh arugula lettuce it's probably one of my favorite lettuces right here especially for sandwiches some nice bright red tomatoes nice and juicy and so we've got our two little sections of meatloaf here we're just going to turn them just like this and then we're going to take some of our leftover glaze and just glaze this over the top just like this and then we're just going to set our top piece of bread on right there all right so i went ahead and sliced this in half look how amazing that looks let's go ahead and give this a try wow oh my gosh that is bursting with flavor the grilled them did such a good job baking that meatloaf and definitely um, rock sourdough bread with uh, with meatloaf sandwiches is so good and keep it simple just with some lettuce and tomato no need to go overboard with extra condiments because you really want to taste the flavor of the meat so a uh, pretty quick and simple recipe for some hearty sandwiches that makes great leftovers so um, let us know what you think in the comments uh, give us a like and a subscribe to our channel if you enjoyed the video and uh, appreciate you watching. We'll see you again soon.